I gotta edit this video for my trip. Here we are in the French Aviation and Space Museum and where all the World War I planes are, but, but this is a metal plane. I didn't know they had metal planes in World War I. It says it's a, a J-9. Let me see if I can find out what that is. Hugo Junkers believed aircraft should be manufactured in metal, primarily due to the advantages of durability and strength. Aircraft at that time were made of wood, cloth, and wire, and could not be exposed to the elements. On December 12, 1915, his J-1, an all-metal monoplane, clad in steel, made its first flight. It appeared very streamlined without the usual wing bracing. Wind tunnel tests showed the external bracing was unnecessary. The internally braced wing was called the catalevered wing. It had a thicker airfoil and was much heavier wing due to the internal bracing. The lack of external bracing reduced drag. Another unique feature of the Yonkers aircraft was the subframe containing the engine, cockpit, and wing roots all in one unit. As a fighter plane, the Junkers J-1 would be able to make low-level strafing flights over enemy troops. Machine gun bullets would simply bounce off her steel skin. Unfortunately, this plane did not meet the specifications of the Imperial German Air Service. The military requirements were a top speed of 145 kilometers per hour or 90 miles per hour a flight duration of 90 minutes, and the ability to climb 3,000 meters or 900 feet within 20 minutes. Nevertheless, Hugo Junkers was determined to build an all-metal fighter plane for the Imperial German Air Service. The improved J-1 aircraft was known as the J-2. The J-2 and derivative aircraft improvements included a fully enclosed 120 horsepower Mercedes inline water-cooled six-cylinder engine. The cooling radiator for the engine was redesigned and mounted below the cockpit to reduce frontal drag. On later models, it would be returned to the nose position. No doubt this was due to the radiator vulnerability to ground fire and close troop support. No changes were made to the landing gear on the J-2. The vertical stabilizer was one piece, no fixed fin, that is, a one-piece rudder. The J-2 also failed to meet the rate of climb specification. As the result of the first J-1 and the second J-2 aircraft, one would ascertain that the aerodynamic efficiency was very good. We thought we, the Junkers designers, were over the hill. This, unfortunately, was not the case. We had to start again from the very beginning. The reason was that in spite of the favorable horizontal speed, the aircraft could not meet military climb specifications. We had to develop an aircraft that not only had low drag for ease of maneuver in the horizontal plane, but that could climb well. The company continued improvements on the monoplane, but under the pressure of the German army, they built a biplane. That was the J-4. It was clad with corrugated dual aluminum, a new alloy of aluminum, except for the cockpit and observer areas, which were clad in steel, making these areas bulletproof. Hugo Junkers factory had difficulty building aircraft fast enough to fill the government demand. The German government sought to merge Junkers aircraft manufacturing with that of Anthony Fokker. Fokker had the aircraft manufacturing expertise that Junker liked. The merger took place in 1917. The merger did not produce the desired results in innovation and design improvement because Junkers and Fokker continued to design and develop aircraft independently as opposed to cooperating. The J-7 aircraft evolved with minor impact the radiator repositioned in the nose. This aluminum-clad 
J-7 aircraft met all the government specifications. The Junkers J-7 had a top speed of 125 miles per hour. Further iterations will have a J-8 and eventually the J-9. Over 100 of the DIs or J-9s were built. Four of these planes were captured in Belgium. One of them had a bullet hole in it and indicated it had probably been in combat. Only one of these J-9 type aircraft exists today. It is in the Musée de la Air et de la Space in Paris. In the 1930s, the rise of the Nazi party led to the nationalization of aircraft manufacturing, including that of Junkers Fokker Partnership. Hugo Junkers died in 1935 after many accomplishments in aircraft design and manufacturing. The Junkers J-110 Monkey was the first all-metal aircraft in the world. Hugo Junkers had the tenacity in aircraft design and manufacturing to create this forerunner of modern aircraft. The J-1 eventually became the J-7, the first all-metal fighter plane. It was also the predecessor to the metal airline, the first of which was the Junkers F-13, produced in 1919. The cantilevered wing and low wing model plane design are predominant features in all modern aircraft. 